What a night for the NHL yesterday. We had ourselves what was the two Stanley Cup final teams go out there and absolutely just crap the bed against some of the worst teams in the NHL of last season. We'd already spoken about the Montreal Canadiens and the Buffalo Sabres, but... In that video, I said we'd talk about Detroit and Tampa Bay as well. Well, guess what? We didn't end up talking about them because just the results of the game kind of spooked me a little bit. And I was like, okay, I need to sleep this off. I don't want to talk about it yet. Let's wait until next morning and then give our thoughts about Detroit, Tampa Bay. Because, man, we have some stuff to go over here. The Red Wings are absolutely insane. And there's a whole bunch to go over from this game in particular that I think is definitely worth noting. Firstly, not even with the Red Wings. Andre Vasilevsky, dude, what's going on with this guy? It's been two games, I get that, two games, I definitely don't want to come to any conclusions here, but just in the span of these two games, we have not been getting the Andre Vasilevsky that Tampa Bay fans know and love, that Vesna voters know and love, because this guy has just been absolutely a different version of himself. Now, I don't want to make it seem like this is a problem just yet, because in two games, anything can change. Who knows if this is still persisting after a week or two, but just keep your eyes out, man. Andre Vasilevsky has been off to a pretty rough start so far, so we'll see if this continues to maybe, I don't know, five or six or seven games. By then, I think it'll be time to start worrying, quote-unquote. Now, it's just, okay, it's first games of the season, it's the season jitters, I guess you could say. Either way, though, there are a few other things that I wanted to talk about when it comes to the Detroit Red Wings side of things. Let's talk about Tyler Bertuzzi, let's talk about Dylan Larkin, and let's talk about Raymond and Sider. Speaking on Dylan Larkin, because he is the guy who kicked off the entire scoring fest of yesterday's 7-6 overtime win for the Lightning. Yeah, that's right. The Red Wings blew this game, losing in overtime. Larkin had himself a moment when... Not only did he score the first goal of the season, okay, that's cool, it's a really bad play where Vasilevsky has the puck like behind him and he doesn't see it, and then Larkin just comes in and he puts it in, but Dylan Larkin and Matthew Joseph, really, really ugly stuff to see right there. Joseph comes in and he hits Dylan Larkin from behind and Larkin goes headfirst into the boards. So what does Larkin do immediately afterwards? Hey, this is pretty much the same thing that happened last year with Jamie Benn, where Jamie Benn was pretty much able to go off unscathed, and Larkin missed the remainder of this season because of it. Because Larkin was already impacted in a hugely negative way from something like this, you could definitely understand why he was so frustrated in that moment, as he got up and he absolutely clocked Joseph in the face. Now, they were both assessed penalties, Larkin was actually given a match penalty, and he was no longer seen. However, the entire scrum that ensued afterwards was a little interesting, because not only did Mathieu Joseph get a penalty, but Jan Ruda got one as well. Afterwards, the Red Wings ended up on the power play. So, uh, yeah, you could definitely understand why John Cooper is upset. My own two cents about it is this. Matthew Joseph, you cannot be hitting people like that. Dylan Larkin, you cannot be hurting people like that. But at the same time, for Dylan Larkin, when you take a look at the context, yeah, this is really bad. I can totally understand what he was feeling when he clocked Joseph in the head right there. And to be honest, if I was in that position, I honestly might have done the same thing. So even though both guys did things that they're pretty much not allowed, which is why they serve penalties for him, for Dylan Larkin, it's the context behind it which makes it a lot more understandable, you know? Not justified, it's not like he should have been able to do that or that he should have been allowed, but it's understandable. Dylan Larkin is having a hearing today from the NHL as we speak, so we'll give a little bit of an update as to that when that gets settled. Tyler Bertuzzi, dude, this guy comes out here with four goals on the night, with some of them being absolute bangers. The first goal he scores, he absolutely dangles his way to the front of the net and beats Vasilevsky far side. Who does he dangle to get there? Oh, not some scrubs in a Tampa Bay jersey, no. He dekes out Hedman and Sergachev, does a little inside-outside move right through his legs, puts it out in front, and Andre Vasilevsky falls for it. He does not catch the right side. Tyler Bertuzzi's first goal of the year is an absolute banger, and it's this kind of dynamism that we have been looking to expect out of this guy when he signed that contract extension earlier on in the summer. 
Give it a few more minutes and Tyler Bertuzzi then gets his second goal of the game. It's an Adam Ernie shot on the power play, or just as the power play is expiring, where Bertuzzi puts in the rebound. Two goals in the span of about seven minutes right there. At this point, it's 3-0, and everybody's kind of memeing on this game. Oh my goodness, the Red Wings are up 3-0 on the Lightning. Ha ha ha. Look at this, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the champions. What are they doing? They can't even go up against Detroit. They're down 3 nothing. How crazy is that? And uh, yeah, Andre Palat kind of heard you, social media. And he's like, yeah, we kind of need to get on the board. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here you go. Back of the net. Boom. It's now 3-1. Red Wings fans are kind of like, okay, well, we're still up by two. And we're halfway through the game right here. And guess what? The Dylan Larkin stuff happens. So we end up getting a four-on-three power play for the Wings. Guess what? It's Cider. It's Raymond. It's... Bertuzzi out there, and it's Robbie Fabry just cycling the puck in the offensive zone like nobody's business. We'll get onto Raymond and Sider in a bit here, but eventually it's Raymond who holds off as he has the puck on the left side. He inches his way towards the middle. He just holds on to it. Patience, patience, patience. And then he sets up Fabry, who throws it back out in front. Tyler Bertuzzi right there on the doorstep. The cross crease, bada bing, bada boom, bada goal. And Tyler Bertuzzi gets his hat trick. And it's a Second period hat trick, too. It's 4 1 Detroit after what is a beautiful play from Lucas Raymond. That's his first NHL point ever. We had skipped over Moritz Sider because he got one as well, also on the first Tyler Bertuzzi goal. But eventually, it's like, okay, great. The Red Wings are up 4 1, and things cannot go any better. Until Steven Stamkos just decides that he wants to go out there and score two goals to end off the period, which is what he did. Two power play markers there for Steven Stamkos, and the Red Wings are still up by the time the third period starts. It's 4-3 now instead of 3-0. But then the third period gets underway, and guess who it is? It's Tyler Bertuzzi coming out of the penalty box. The puck gets sent all the way down, and the first one to it is Tyler Bertuzzi in the offensive zone. He picks it up, scans his options, nobody's there, so he pops out in front and just goes upstairs on Andre Vasilevsky. Moritz Sider gets his second assist of the game, Tyler Bertuzzi with his fourth goal of the game, and then Nemestikov gets one a few minutes later too, so the Red Wings are up 6-3. to three. They were up 3-0 earlier, they're up 6-3 to three later. Two separate three-goal leads in this hockey game. What are the Stanley Cup champions doing, man? How are they losing to Detroit like this? Oh, okay, there's Ross Colton, there's one. Okay, well, it's 7-4 to four now, we'll see. Oh my goodness, Nikita Kucherov. Stamkos to Hedman to Kucherov, you cannot be leaving that guy open. Oh my goodness, there's another one, Alex Killorn, what a play! What a play in the corner! The Red Wings get their signals mixed up, it's Anthony Shirelli in the forecheck who causes that entire mishap, and the Lightning tie things up and send it to overtime! Overtime sucked. For anybody who is a fan of the Red Wings, it was just Tampa Bay holding onto the puck the entire time. They got chances, they got passes, they got possession, they got the goal. Andre Palat seals the deal. 7-6 to six is your final score over here after what was an incredibly exciting game for the Red Wings. Up until, like, the 47-minute mark. We can kind of ignore everything else afterwards if you're a Red Wings fan. Losing a game like this sucks, but holy, were there some very good positives that we could take a look at in this hockey game. And the biggest ones coming in the form of Raymond and Sider. These guys looked absolutely amazing. You saw Raymond on the power play, you saw Sider on the power play. These guys are being given minutes. It's not like they're just here to be extra bodies. They're here to play, and they're here to be top contributors on this hockey team. Thank you, Jeff Blaschel's wife, Mrs. Blaschel, for this, because just seeing Raymond do his thing, you know, this guy looks like an NHL veteran with his decision-making, but he has all the pizzazz, skill, and star power of a young forward in the league. Moritz Sider is going out there trolling the lightning, dangling the puck around some of their guys in front of their bench, and standing up for himself when the big bad Victor Hedman comes up there and starts knocking on his doorstep. He is already feisting it up with the opposition, and you love to see that because it shows this guy feels like he belongs, you know? And now you take a look at where things have gone from this first game. Obviously, you know, Tyler Bertuzzi, four goals, that is great. But guess what? Moritz Sider, two assists. Lucas Raymond, one assist as well. The boys are here. They've suited up in the National Hockey League. Lucas Raymond, 19 years old. Moritz Sider, what is he, 20, 21 years old? 
you really cannot be happier, not just for these guys, but for the Red Wings fan base as well. It's been a long time since we've seen a young rookie break into the league like these guys have. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the Wings versus Lightning game? I hope you enjoyed this video about Trolls 99. And bye.